Well, hello. The subject is mutations. First of all, what is a mutation? What did the book say? A permanent alteration in what? In a DNA base sequence. A permanent alteration in the DNA base sequence. And we talked about what causes mutations. Um, but um, not all mutations are heritable. Uh, some could possibly be passed on to offspring. Some never could. It's impossible. And so I ask you to answer question two uh, in your uh, study questions under mutations. And that ask you first of all to figure out what is the difference between somatic and germline cells. Excuse me. And um, and so uh, in a class, what I usually do is I grab my cheek and ask the next student in line, "Am I grabbing somatic or germline cells?" The student uh, often uh, checks back in the book, looks up to me, and I keep wiggling my cheek cells here. And so when I grab these cheek cells, am I grabbing somatic or germline cells? Hmm. Hmm. Well, you probably figured it out. Uh, soma is a word that means body. And so uh, uh, the somatic cells are the general body cells. The general body cells. Yes, they are. And uh, what are the germline cells? They're a very special category. Are they egg cells or sperm cells? Mm, close, but not quite. I'd probably give half credit for that uh, if I ask what germline cells are. But no, they are cells that become egg cells or sperm cells through uh, what? Meiosis? In other words, they are the parent cells in our reproductive organs that at some point will divide by meiosis to become egg cells or sperm cells. Well, gee, it's pretty obvious uh, as far as mutations are concerned, uh, which one, mutations to which one could possibly be inherited. We don't, uh, we don't make babies with, with uh, somatic cells, right? We don't make babies with somatic cells. We don't make babies with somatic cells. And I, so if I uh, have mutations to my somatic cells, assuming I survive them, uh, I'm still not going to pass those on to my offspring because we don't make babies with somatic cells. And so, uh, uh, but germline cells, they become egg cells and sperm cells. So a mutation to uh, germline cells could possibly be passed on to offspring. So, um, on one of this subject, I usually mention that there's a mutation kicking around my family tree. And uh, it's a mutation for a sixth finger. Say, what? Well, yeah, I didn't discover this mutation until daughter number two was born. And uh, like all, uh, like all uh, <coughs> red-blooded American males, um, I was present in the delivery room. And, uh, and I wasn't just present. I was, uh, I was, I'd gone to class. I was a, I was a coach. Ooh, that was hard work. Wow. Being a coach in, in labor and delivery, oh, man, it just wore me out. I mean, it's, whew, man, it's a tough job. Tough, tough job. And uh, so, anyway, um, daughter number two hadn't been born but a minute or two, and she was uh, put over in a little cute little steel bassinet over to the side, and while the doctor worked on my wife, and... Um, I looked over and I said, Doctor, what's that? And the doctor looked over and hanging from my brand new little baby's finger was a thing that hung down and a round thing on that and uh, kind of about uh, about this round, it's hanging down and uh, he said, oh they call that a sixth finger. He says, I'll just tie it off real tight up next to the finger and in a couple days it'll be dead and I'll just clip it off. And he did. And that produced a bump on my little daughter's finger. And I thought, you know, I've got a bump in exactly the same place. I don't know if we'll be able to see it in this film or not, but there's a there's a little bump right there on my little little pinky. Let's see if I can turn it sideways so you can see the little bump. And yeah, not too well. Anyway, uh, so I called my father and, and, and asked him. I said, uh, say, Dad, when I was born, did I have this little thing hanging off my hand? so forth. He said, well, son, I think you did. So, uh, I've called that daughter my uh, my bump buddy since then. Uh, hers happens to be in the other hand right here. Same same place, but on the uh, opposite opposite hand. 
opposite Pinky. So um, she's had four children, and I've been looking for the next bump buddy, and I don't know. I may have to wait for the grandchildren because not one of them uh, has uh, expressed that little bump. Not one of them had that sixth finger. But, uh, oh well. So uh, where did that come from? Well, back up my family line someplace. In somebody's germline cell, there was a mutation that causes this little situation, and it's been passed on generation after generation. I, I don't know how many generations, but you know, every now and then I have a student who comes up and says, hey, professor, I've got the same thing. I got a little bump right there or over there. In fact, as I had one student had it on both hands one time. You know what I always tell that student? I always say, uh, well... I uh, say, shake that student's hand and say, well, hello, cousin. Say, what? Yeah, what's my assumption? My assumption is we inherited that mutation from an ancestor back up the family tree that had that mutation has passed it on down. And so uh, what's the only other explanation? That two totally separate family lines had exactly the same mutation. So I've met a number of cousins over the years. Uh, that looked a lot of them quite a bit different than me. Uh, red and yellow, black and white, and uh, all kinds of colors of the rainbow. But that's fine. I'm just very happy to meet my long lost cousins. And uh, and so uh, if if any of you out there in this online course have one of those little bumps, and you care to let me know, I'd be glad to uh, arrange a meeting so I can shake your hand and say hello, cousin. Anyway, what's the point here? The point is that uh, mutations occur somehow and if they're even potentially going to be passed on to offspring they have to happen to what kind of cell? Germline cells. What are germline cells again? Cells that become egg cells or sperm cells and there you have it. Okay that's it for this one.